In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get your LinkedIn ads impression, clicks, and cost data into HubSpot for free. So uh, let's dive straight into it. Now, if you can see here's an example screenshot of some data. And what we have here is the standard company columns. So we have like life cycle stage, original source type, um, and then the new column here that we're looking to create and pull the data into is LinkedIn ads impressions. There's a few reasons why we can use this. And as we all know, LinkedIn ads isn't typically a direct response platform. And from a marketing perspective, if we're just trying to drive bottom of funnel product ads all the time, it's very likely that we're not going to see a lot of success. So what we want to do is be able to see that people have seen ads over the last you know, six, 12 months and then have come in through other means. So for example, you can see here customer came through from organic search, but we know from their customer records that they wrote how you heard about us. It was from LinkedIn ads. If we had just gone through traditional um, first touch attribution and original source type here, we would have said, okay, organic search has been given the credit for this one. And we would have potentially looked to ramp up organic search versus LinkedIn ads. So it's not one of those ones where it's going to solve all of our attribution problems, but it kind of looks at that attribution triangle with um, looking at data that we can pull in from assisted direct response, as well as the more um, qualitative data about asking people how they heard about us. So it kind of fills in all those gaps. So let's work out how we can get this data into this column and how then we can use it in reports uh, later on. So First and foremost, we're gonna to have to go into, if you go up here and click on this little settings icon, you can go into property settings down here, which is underneath data management, and you can click create property, um, call it LinkedIn ad impression data. Um, I'll just call it test because we've already got one, um, test two, and then we do it from company, which is important. Um, and then you can do company information and then uh, just call it test so I can go back and delete later and then go and field type and do um, number right here and then you can format it in the way you like but just doing a formatted number and click create as you can see here if we go on to uh, company properties um, we have already created one called LinkedIn ad impression data um, which is an example one that we've created um, for this process so first and foremost how can we go and grab this impression data because looking at, at your native LinkedIn ad company data within an account you can typically only see you know up to around 20 companies that have seen your ads I know in some cases they're showing more and more and I think that will build but then how do we extract that data so what we can do is if we go onto a Google Sheet, you can use API connectors to pull this data out and it'll typically pull out all the LinkedIn ad impression data uh, for companies that have seen your ad, typically over three impressions, sometimes even as little as one or two impressions of the ad, which is super cool. What we've got here is an example of the result of the process I'll show you in a second, but we've pulled out all the company related data, how many clicks, the cost, the impressions. This is why I said impressions are the main uh, element because as soon as you scroll down and start getting less impressions you'll start losing that click um, and cost data um, but the impressions one is the main um, I guess touch point that we want to be looking at here and if you scroll down here we can see here that we've got literally thousands of companies that have seen our ads over a set period of time I believe this is from last quarter um, to actually then go through and pull that out and then to start then syncing that with our HubSpot data before we automatically re-upload it so how we can do this if you go into extension and go to data slayer as you can see here, we've tested a whole load of different um, API extractors over the years on our um, sort of uh, personal uh, platforms to sort of go through from agent analytics to coefficient to data slayer to supermetrics to Windsor to a whole like host of different um, different accounts. And the thing about data slayer again is they have a very good um, free account, which ultimately means you can go and you can start playing around and extracting this LinkedIn ads uh, impression data without putting any money down, which is an awesome way to testing. I believe it's limited uh, about a thousand rows when it's free, uh, but it's a good way if you're just doing it from like a monthly rolling basis, you're probably actually going to be fine with doing that to start with before you can then upgrade to like the $20 a month version. I'd almost recommend getting the paid version of this one because data slayer has, we've tested a whole load and from a LinkedIn ads property perspective it pulls out um, the most um, API properties that we've seen across any other platform and that includes things like frequency tracking um, and just a whole load of other metrics which in other platforms have either been sunsetted or haven't ever been created in the first place and we do a lot of 
um, analysis and a lot of like manipulating of the data in sheets uh, to actually work out how the ads are performing month on month, etc. Um, and if you have this ability to pull out all this unique data, which isn't available in other API connectors, then it's super handy. Um, but enough about that anyway. Let's just go on to data slayer and go on launch sidebar. Also has an automatic refresh that so pulls for this data on like certain scheduled periods as well. So if we go on to this LinkedIn query one we've created before, you can click create query. But if I go and edit query, I'll show you how the process looks. So you can go on data connectors and click on LinkedIn ads. Um, these are all the connectors available down there, which is super cool. We got um, our ad account here. And in the data table, we got clicks, cost, and impressions as the metrics. So clicks, cost, and impressions. You can pull through any other ones you want as well. You can like frequency, like mentioned. Um, that's probably better for different reports. And then the dimension row company. So it actually pulls through the company name. And then you just click confirm changes or generate, and it generates it. You can also set a schedule to pull it through, which you can do sort of every day, week, month, depending on you know how many credits you have for the next step, uh, next step from Zapier we're going to get onto. Um, but yeah, I'd probably say set up for um yeah maybe weekly because you don't want to look at a you know, daily attribution setting i think it depends on on how big your budget is so once we've got this we then go on to the second tab you can create at the bottom and let me break this down for you a little bit because there's a few you there's a few different things going on here um first things first we want to look at these three columns here and the two main columns i suggest would be company id and company name now the interesting thing about company name and company um, name from linkedin ads impression data is we found over the years that HubSpot literally uses LinkedIn to LinkedIn uh, data to enrich its own data. So when you pull through company names, a lot of the time, even if there's weird nuances that are appearing in the company name on LinkedIn, then that weird nuance appears with the enriched data on HubSpot from a contact pushed into a company level. So we kind of thought if they're just matching them, there's not like every single time, but the majority of times, if they're matching them every time, it's gonna be an easy way just to sync these two together. So we pulled this data through and from doing that again, for a very similar process um, of going on to, um, if you go on to the HubSpot one, we went on to, uh, wait for this to load. Again, we've gone into connectors, HubSpot, your account chose our account. Data table, we did number of open deals um, and company name and record ID. I wouldn't even worry about number of associated deals because we want to see that within the CRM. We don't really even want to come in here to to look at it around here, I don't think at all. Um, so it's definitely worth um, looking at that. Um, sorry, it says my camera's overheating. That's not good. Anyway, we'll see how far we get. What we have now is we have the company names, the company ID, which is important for the re-upload to HubSpot. And then we have a number, number of associated deals, which you can or can't pull through. It can be quite interesting. And then you obviously now have this little um, link to add impression data. So I've added this. And what I've used is this sum here. So a little V lookup saying everything in this column here, if there's a match between one of these company names and one of these HubSpot company names, then show me how many of this fourth row, which is the impression data has been pulled across. If you put third, three there, it'll pull through the clicks data. If you pull through uh, two, it'll pull through the cost data. Sorry, if you pull through three, it'll be the cost data. If you pull through number row number two, it'll be the, uh, the uh, clicks data. And what happens here is it then starts pulling through these numbers. Um, so we've got 15, 86 impressions, 55 against these companies in HubSpot, um, which is super cool because it's just a straight match. And what we've said is that there is no data there. What we can do is just have zero um, and then zero is pulled up in these, which is important because typically the default would be no data. But because we set the property as a number in HubSpot, then there'd be an error and we don't want an error because it just makes everything a lot harder. Okay, so we've got this data and we've got this sheet now, which becomes the main one because we have a company ID, we have we have the company ID, we have the name, we and then we have the LinkedIn impression. So one thing you can do is if you just want this snapshot and you can't bother to do a real-time update and you want the whole legacy data of like you set, you know, all the deals we've ever had, all the LinkedIn impressions for like lifetime, which you can do. You can then just go back into uh, companies, you can go into uh, import, and then what you can do is import um from a computer file, go next. Um, you can do company level next. And then when you upload it here, what all you've got to do is sync, all you've got to do is sync the company ID and the LinkedIn ad impressions um, to the relevant um, mapping properties within HubSpot. 
And then ultimately that's going to um, allow you then to just pull through the updated impressions here without updating anything else. Not that anything's changed, but in case it does as well. So that's one stage you can do it is just go and automatically upload them. If you want to do it in an automatic fashion, like we said would be uh, you know the most easiest way of doing it um, without having to actually go in and do it yourself would be to go into uh, a Zapier. And again, Zapier, you get about 100 free zaps per month um, when you uh, use the free account. So if you're using the free data slayer, free Zapier, you can still create this automatic process. Um, if you've got like loads and loads and you want daily um, updates and you want impressions across, you know, every single company, then that's obviously gonna be slightly more and you probably would have to pay. But what I'd recommend is only actually uh, refreshing this maybe um, once a day um, or once a week for how often you wanna pull through your HubSpot and your LinkedIn um, impression data. Um, and then what I'd say is from a HubSpot perspective, when we go through this, you go and connect this sheet. So you've got our Google sheet connected here. Um, what I've set here is new spreadsheet, a new or updated spreadsheet row. This would then actually create a trigger to up Date HubSpot every time even these impressions are um, updated. If you've got a free account, what I suggest is only doing every time a new row is created. Because every time a new row is created down here, it means that you've got a new um, lead that's come in or new contact that's come in. It can then sense check it against the data within um, your LinkedIn ad impression data, and then it'll create a new row. And the beauty of that as well is it won't actually keep updating your LinkedIn ad impressions um, once they've become a opportunity or lead or contact, which is actually really good because then you can start saying, okay, we've actually seen um, that it takes, you know, on average, we're hitting companies like 15 times before they then fill out a form. Uh, but then it stops counting those 15 impressions once they become a lead because you kind of done that work from, you know, anonymizing them to then actually getting them in the account, which means they're actually an entity. So the most important metric for a lot of performance marketing is actually seeing, you know, the touch points and the time period for getting someone from unknown that you're marketing to from a relatively broad spectrum into a name contact or like a hand raiser or whatever you want to call them. So once you've done that, you go onto this uh, Google spreadsheet that we just um, were talking about. Um, you got the trigger event, which will be new updated, and then um, you can connect your account there. If you go on to configure, what I did is I looked at the um, LinkedIn ad test that we pulled through for the worksheet, which was the second worksheet along, um, as well as the um, trigger of any column. Like I said, again, um, you can go and just select one column. If you don't want to have LinkedIn ad impressions every time they update, you can remove that and just select a new company ID. You can then look at that. But this is kind of up to you guys and how much data you want to push into the account. And then when we go next, you can kind of see some examples, go through here and check if your data is being pulled through correctly. And then we go on to HubSpot, connect your HubSpot account. The action event is update company because we're updating the property within the company um, and then connecting your account there. And then you can go through here and set the ID. The object ID is the company ID. And then the other important one to go down is to then match um, the <clears throat> impression. So what we've done there is just made sure that the ID um, and the impression data is the only stuff that we're passing through because we don't want to be passing through all the data every time, especially if someone has changed something in the Excel spreadsheet. We don't want to be updating the wrong information. So just the number of impressions and the company ID. And then you can hit continue and you can send a couple of tests. And as you can see earlier, just before I got on, I went through and I literally just went and updated um, a LinkedIn impression from like 15 to 16 um, and 85 to 86. And within the HubSpot, it changed it from 86, 85 to 86 and uh, 54 to 55. So it shows that it's all pulling through in an automated fashion. So that's very much a whistle stop tour of how you can take your LinkedIn ads impression data, click data and cost data and you can sync it in to your uh, CRM uh, dashboard for free. Give you one more data point to be able to triangulate um, the impact of your LinkedIn ads efforts outside of just direct response. I hope you found that handy. I think if you found this video useful, you'll also find a video I did recently around a um, LinkedIn ad script, which goes down all your company impression data and then uses ChatGPT uh, within that script and the OpenAI API to then start giving an overview of the company to see if it's relevant for you guys or whether you should go through and negative that company out. So I'll link to that up here or down in the comments, depending on where you're seeing this. I hope you have a great week, guys. And yeah, speak to you very, very soon.